What's up guys, Wednesday, May 17th. Wanted to talk about a few things real quick in case I don't get a chance. Uh, what a day to be off the market today. So I posted this morning at 8.30 in the morning. Said, hey guys, watch out. Uh, over, I said yesterday, I said over 4.12 is gonna be a rip your face off rally. Um, and uh, they gave it to us today instead of yesterday, right? So um, what happened? I was expecting a failure. Everybody was expecting a failure, right? Um, but they came back in. And uh, after the market closed, they ripped it at 410. So if you see 410, they ripped it up here. 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 And then this here, was a separate move from here to here. Um, if you want to look at, uh, uh, let's take a look at ES real quick. Um, Cause I've got some numbers on the board. If you look at, uh, first we'll take a look at this here. This is book map. I was talking about earlier this week. I said, guys, uh, 4175 showed up on the board for some reason. And uh, of course, everything's going to run slow. Um, but anyway, I said 41.75 was on the board, so we need to watch out for a squeeze. That was on yesterday. And what did they do today? They ran up and touched 41.75, right? For tomorrow, in the next few days, here are our main levels. We got 4200 is back. 4200 is 41 or 417.60 on the SPY. So look for that. Um, that's important because if you go back over here, 417.58 is the prior top, which is 4200. So they're going to rechallenge that. That would, this kind of move, that would be expected to get back up there. The reason that's important is because this is a green topping tail. Even though we closed barely at the bottom, I mean, basically flat, it's still green. And they want to fill that in before they can move lower. Um, just like these ones here, you know, they fill this. This one's still unfilled. So, uh, you know, let's see potentially, and I would ex expect us to get close anyway to this 418.30 area. So keep that in mind this week. However... We also have options expiration. We have a huge green candle where they can spend two days, two inside days before they pump it back up. That's kind of what I'm expecting. I'm kind of expecting us to just play between these levels, 413.82 up to 417.60, but, but you know, basically just chopping. They could play anywhere in this. Getting below, if you look at the opening print today, 412.35, that's been on our chart forever actual open was 412.35 to the penny that's interesting uh getting below 412.35 they could uh come down here and refill some of these so we want to keep that in mind but after a day like this i wouldn't expect it where i would expect it is let's move closer here uh, let's go to I'm not sure why my lines are all messed up but here's the one hour chart this is what I posted at 8 30 this morning I said guys watch out actually I said yesterday watch out above 412 they're gonna rip your face off with a rally and sure enough they did right so they got up here broke 41235 which is interesting that was the opening print even though it didn't open there it was down here but anyway they got above the uh, Got above the trend line and just ripped it, right? I doubt they're even going to come back to retest it, but they could spend a couple days chopping sideways. And that would make sense because they're still in this channel. They're still in, they would still be in this channel, right? If they chopped a couple days, right? They don't have to come all the way down. I would say definitely buy at 412.35 for another push higher. But I would guess the next two days, unfortunately, is going to be two inside days with nothing going on. They want to sell you calls and puts so that they expire worthless, right? 
That's the whole point of making big moves before the 19th. And we talked about last year, 2021, why the 19th was important as well. Anyway, all that to say, expect junk for some reason if we were to get above, uh, you know, back above 4.1485 tomorrow, you know, we could potentially move to 4.1760 and maybe 4.1830. We can probably go ahead and just put a line on there for that. Um, 4.18.30 area, whatever. 4.18.27.4.18.30. So that's potentially a move higher. Now, again, like I said, if you look at book map, that guy is there at 4.8 at 4.17.60. So I would expect to be up there. Now there's a lot of liquidity down here, so I would more likely expect us to spend some time around 413 to 415 area for the next two days sideways movement and then monday we wake up and we realize we're at 4200 we'll see how that works but keep those numbers in mind 4200 uh we'll go ahead and put a line there uh 4200 4175 4155 4160, 4155, 4150. Below that, um, I don't see a lot. So actually getting below 4150, we could see a pretty large move down. And that would be interesting too, to get below 4150. We could see some of this stuff refill and keep that in mind. Um, some of these red tails haven't filled in yet. So do I think we're still bearish? Yeah, uh, I still think that we're lower highs being able to challenge this is going to be pretty hard. We're going to need some serious, uh, serious catalyst for that. Um, but it's possible we get above that and uh, rip back higher. Not this week, though. Not this week. Um, what I would expect more likely would be to come in, fill that green candle, chop around for a few more days, and then fail. Because at the end of the day, the Fed isn't buying. This is an interesting tool I just found. Uh, let's clean up the chart a little bit. Um, take this stuff off. I just found out about this, so I don't know anything about it, but somebody pointed it out, Fed Liquid Liquidity Indicator. And what this says is, is it's a chart of the Federal Reserve providing money, pumping money in and taking money out of the market, basically. What I find is interesting is you have these huge moves this huge move right here, right? And then we had a huge move in SPY. Um, let me take it off logarithmic. But we had, uh, you know, this huge move in SPY that just ripped, you know, from there. Um, what's interesting to me is that these rips happened before the bigger move did. So this could be an interesting indicator to use. Um, I'm going to keep an eye on this and kind of back test it a little bit because as sometimes it doesn't work like this one here, right? We went, the Fed was selling, you know, and we had a little bit of sell off, but ultimately they pumped it back up. So I don't know if this is going to be important or not. Um, clearly you can see the market moves with it though. Um, as the Fed is selling, the market's going down if they start buying up again the fed move the spy moves up they start selling spy moves down so ultimately you know what the fed is doing is what spy is going to do so if you look at that this is interesting if you lay it over this week and you say okay so obviously they were pumping the market here they continued through so what this is, they're not necessarily buying stocks, but they're they're adding liquidity to the market. And adding liquidity was important because right here, they could have put in a lower low and crashed. And the Fed stepped in, even though they say they're not printing, the Fed stepped in and said, we're going to provide all this liquidity. And then after that liquidity was bought up, there were no more sellers. They bought out all the sellers, right? All the sellers that wanted to sell and put in a new thing they bought all of those sellers and they had to buy a lot that's why this number shot up 
right? They had to buy a lot of sellers in order to save the market. The same way here, as the Fed started selling again, we just moved sideways. You know, this, this uh, bullishness kind of held while this was sideways. We started to fall. As you can see here, the Fed sold. As the Fed was selling, you know, the market was selling. And then, interestingly, as we were moving sideways, the Fed was adding back in. And so we can see that's why, that's why, uh, and you can see it better on a four hour chart. Um, so as the Fed was pumping the market, basically, that's why we did not fail because they, you know, pushed the market back up. So here's something I'm going to keep in mind because, you know, if, if I'm screaming down here saying, guys, the market's going to end, the world is over, and the Fed starts pumping again, then we're on the wrong side of the trade. So let's keep this indicator on our charts, uh, just kind of an idea. As of right now, you know, the Fed is in a selling trend. This could just be a break, a small break from selling, and they're going to continue selling because if you see, you know, they're kind of selling more than they're buying, right? This was an interesting thing, and that's probably that bank failure thing. I don't remember exactly. But if you keep in mind, let's zoom out again. If you look at this, the Fed is still selling. They're not buying. So we have to keep that in mind that there will eventually be another sell-off. That this bullishness is short-term and we cannot be bullish for that long. Uh, as you see, COVID, they pumped the market, right? We went higher, the Fed decided to start selling and that's when the bear market started. So the Fed is not buying, even though they're pumping liquidity back in the market, the Fed is not buying. And we can see here there's kind of a divergence because the market's coming down, the Fed is actually selling at a greater rate than the market is moving. So there will eventually be some kind of correction down here where the Fed and the market catch up with each other. So keep that in mind. I don't want you to be overly bullish, but don't also don't miss a large move. If we can break this, break this up, we can retest this area, and uh, that'd be a pretty nice move. Keep that in mind. Just something to think about. Um, let's look at. Uh, so for tomorrow, we know we're going to uh, 4,200 uh, sometime this week, or maybe Monday. It might be Monday. Uh, the next two days, probably just chop. You know, after a huge move, they're going to consolidate for a couple days, especially in options. They're going to make sure your options expire worthless. And the whole point of this whole move, everything, here's something interesting too. Look at this. Look how fast the market rises. It goes straight up and then it sells off. And then it goes straight up and sells off. Straight up, sells off. Right? It goes straight up straight up straight up and then sells off right you have to keep in mind all of this is still a warning sign we went straight up and we sold off straight up and sold off straight up so what is the expectation based on prior movements it is not to go straight up because we already went straight up it is to sell off so keep that in mind um, it would be interesting if we bounce here at 1235 for 1235 and we can see another straight up move. Um, so we'll keep that in mind. The bullish moves are straight up. The bearish moves take time to process. And, uh, and you know, but typically they've been eating away all of the gains. So keep that in mind. Don't get overly bullish. The only thing I'm overly bullish on is Tesla. Because I want you guys to look at this and tell me if I'm wrong. We have a gap down here at 145. Currently we're at 175, right? So a 30 point move. Everyone is expecting this 50 EMA to be resistance just like it was here, which was also the trend line retest, which was an awesome move that we caught. So the expectation, if they do retest this, is for a 30 point move down. It would be interesting if instead of a 30 point move down, they gap over the 50, open up above 
or not necessarily open up, but recapture the trend line. And by Monday and Tuesday of next week, we find ourselves back up at 195. And even to break this one, 200 before before the next leg down, right? Because we're still in this trend. Everybody's looking at this triangle, but really we're in a we're in a in a flag, right? And I consider consider it a bull flag if you want to, because you know whatever. But keep this in mind. I think this is really important because everybody's expecting a 30 point move down. We could get a 30 point move up, and it would still be a valid move. So keep that in mind. We're in calls right now. Uh, it wouldn't be too late to get calls for next week and see how that goes, especially on some dips. If we get some, uh, if we do get a rejection here and two consolidation days, I would definitely get in on Friday afternoon for some swing calls on Monday. So if I don't mention it, I'm going to be, uh, if I don't make another video, I'm going to be looking for swing calls on Tesla for fun because, you know, these kind of moves, if you look at this, Here's what's really interesting. You gotta look at this. This is a buyer, and he pushed it up from here to here. Right, what's that, 202, 200? They pushed it up from here to here, it's 200. You could expect a move from here to here, 200. That is a, that is a valid expectation, right? I mean, it's not necessarily this move, because if you see you see, they didn't really push it all the way up to here. They pushed it up to right here, which was prior resistance right here. But still, I mean, gosh, that's a heck of a move, dude. Like from there to there to there. It makes sense. So I really like this move. I, I, I don't believe in Tesla, but I really like this chart. So keep this in mind. It could get crazy. Calls are super cheap on Tesla right now. Uh, that's about all I got. Um, just uh, keep that in mind. And Tesla, and I'm not really bullish on anything else except for Coke. Uh, I'm always bullish on Coke. Uh, if you want to start looking at this one on the daily, um, you know, we broke out and we are now at the 50 EMA. I noticed that today. So, you know, it could potentially be uh, another leg down, but I think the bottom's in at Coke. And um, let me adjust my line because that's not quite what I was looking at. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Coca-Cola. It's a. It's just a retest, right? So you could literally make. You could go all in in your retirement fund, make your stop loss sixty-two seventy-five and go all in coke look at this that would be a huge move if you're head and shoulders we talked about this on a video a while back right head and shoulders so your expectation is double the head 53 54 to 65 whatever i mean that's a heck of a move, dude. Like, I love Coca-Cola. I'm looking at, like, a whole case of Coke here that I've been drinking all day. But it's it's beautiful. It's the most beautiful chart on, on, the, on the market right now, Coca-Cola. This is going to be the next NVIDIA. I don't know why. I have no idea why. But Coke is my most bullish stock. Uh, another one I'm bullish on is AI. We missed this huge move. Look at this. Whoa, man. That was awesome. Um, I don't really expect it to put in a new high, but it could. You could say, you know, they're making an expanding microphone, whatever you want to call that, megaphone. I don't know. But we're still in IRBO long-term in our long-term portfolio, and it is looking beautiful. Double test of this trend line, which was prior resistance. I mean, it's just beautiful. That was the COVID highs. Robot stocks. Look at robot stocks. Look at AI. Everybody's talking about it right now, so it's going to be the next bubble. I mean, that was a huge move from there to there. I mean, that's why we're in uh, 35 swing calls in our long-term portfolio because robots aren't going away. Uh, I've been working in the robot sector recently, and it's not going away. It's just going to get bigger, and robots are going to be the next 
the next big thing. Um, Nvidia, uh, I still think it's too high, but they did put in a higher high, so that could be a sign of bullishness for the short term. Uh, you could see some crazy swings up to the 350 area. Ultimately, ultimately, here's what I think. It's going to put in a double top. And it's going to be 10 years before NVIDIA comes back. You can quote me on that. Uh, you guys have a good night.